You know, there's another key component for me in terms of successful and real innovation, and that is empathy. How do we empathize with, with women? How do we understand them better than anybody else? And how do we create a culture here that understands women and can share the feelings that women have? And it starts with who you hire. Hiring people who have empathy for others. And you can tell right away. Then we consistently bring our customers into our conversation here. We've got letters all around. We have our sales meetings open with a letter from our customers. And I'm not kidding you. You look around that table in the sales room, there's like 50 people in there. Half of them are crying by the time we finish reading that first letter because they can see the connection that they are making, the impact they're having as an individual. You know, I can stand up here and talk about, ah, my purpose is to make a difference in women's lives. But when they can see that they as an individual are making a difference and they can connect the dots, that's when it works. One of the most important ways of cultivating empathy within your organization is having physical representations of the customer um, within your office space. This is a great example, this particular customer wall here at Bear Essentials. Um, so I wanted to ask you, Leslie, can yeah. you tell me a little bit about what this wall is and why do you do it? Yeah, since the beginning of time here at Bear Essentials, we've always had some version of a customer wall so that the people who work here really understand that these aren't just numbers, these are actual people like their mother, their sister, their daughter that use our products with names, with real stories. We recently, it was our 20th anniversary, and we decided to develop a special color eyeshadow. And we wanted to give it to our best customers. Now, typically you would think, okay, let's go into our data and let's look at who spent the most last year. And, that, and all of a sudden we're like, but, but is that really who we are? Why don't we? send one of these limited edition special eyeshadows to every single person who works in our boutique. So that's like 200 boutiques, like 2,000, 3,000 people. And the only instructions that we gave them were you can give this to who you think your best customer is. But there's a requirement, and the requirement is that you have to fill out a card and send it back to us to tell us why you chose that customer. We now have, I kid you not, 2,500 plus cards that came back from all of these people who work in our stores telling us why they selected these customers to give this special eyeshadow to. So the beauty of that is they were empowered. They weren't just empowered to give out an eyeshadow, they were empowered to think. Think about why you would give this product and then what defines best customer for you. My God, when you read those stories, I mean, they are, they are, they're life-changing moments. And that's what makes people feel connected to our purpose. And that's what makes our purpose come to life. Like for instance, we have Christina, who works for us, helped a customer named Kelly. Kelly uh, found out that she had a brain tumor and she was taking medication and she wasn't feeling well. So there was a lot of pressure on Christina, but she did her makeup. She looked in the mirror, she cried. They both cried. There was a, a moment, emotional moment. She felt so strongly about it that she wanted to share that story with the rest of the company. So we put it up here, we pass it around to all of our global offices so we all know that we care deeply about the women that use our product. And what's so important about this, again, is not just the effectiveness of it, making you feel close to the customer, but this idea of being able to have customer-driven innovation. A lot of the ideas might even be sparked by stories that are shared here on the wall. What's also really interesting about this is the internal communication that you have yeah. um, that goes on to you know, kind of echo some of these stories. Can you talk about that? Yeah, so we have this internal intranet site where we're constantly adding personal stories from people who work here what they do outside of the office, and in our field team. So we're constantly adding new stories and making sure that every, we send them out so everyone can read them. And then talk about it around coffee. So one thing that's also important to do at your organization is think about what is the relationship between your employer, an employee within the organization, the customer, as well as the brand. So each of these stories wrap around the employee as well as the customer and the brand. And this matters even more potentially in a B2B context. There's organizations that do this in really interesting ways. For example, Salesforce actually has a very similar type of process where salespeople actually nominate stories that have really inspired them 
them. Um, these are all users, and those stories are then fed in to Salesforce, and the best ones are selected and then given an amount of money to go turn those stories into actual videos. So the question is, how are you taking empathy and cultivating within your organization, getting closer to your customer, and then letting those insights, really understanding the customer, drive innovation and growth? Um, so in terms of kids, kind of what Vicki said, like they are tired of all the options. It's overwhelming to them. So um, that's one huge finding. Bring her into the room, bring her into the conversation, constantly dig deep and understand her better. Um, so that we can use those insights to help drive our innovation. For those people that just haven't tried us, how do we get those people right. that haven't tried us in? Or do they know why they have it? Do you know why they haven't tried it? And I'm hearing it all over online. It's because they think it's too complicated. Because they think the, the brush and the jar and the swirl and the tap and the buff, it's, it's a lot for people to take in. We don't just roll out innovation. We understand that there's a trend and that there's a new category and we decide whether we should play in that category, whether, whether that is part, it, does that make sense for our brand? But then what we do is we try and speak to as many women as we can to find out what's working for her. What does she love about it? What does she not love? That for me is how you use empathy to drive innovation.